I, one of the reasons why I was so passionate to come here, there were many, but actually one of them was that the gym I was training in, it had a fairly good atmosphere. It, was, it wasn't a bad gym. Saw that coming. But it was a lot, the there was a lot of roughness. Like enough. There were, I even tried to go for a wrist yeah, takedown, the one I did in the first, both MMA or BJJ. Uh, so really rough, uh, very little explanations of techniques, a lot of rolling, but, but also rough rolling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also come from a culture which is kind of macho-based. Mm -hmm. And there's that belief, which I feel is still spread around in many places, that there's no pain, no gain, mm -hmm. that you can, that, <laughs> well, uh, and just to say a few more words about that, that it, unless there's hardcore intensity and even sometimes up to the absurd level of trauma, that right. there has to be that, right. that uh, expertise cannot be reached. But just one thing I wanted to quickly address is that I already learned you have world level winning athletes athletes here and Conor McGregor is under SBG flag. So just like, it, it's probably different than right. that. So could you uh, say? Well, you know, um, I don't want to sound too arrogant because when I started back in the late 80s and early 90s, actually all the way up through, through the 90s by and large, we trained way too hard. Mm. And the kind of training you're describing would be familiar to the very old school guys that have been with me for two decades or more and be unfamiliar to the people now. We evolved out of that not because we wanted to make more money or the gym got softer. We evolved out of that because we found we could create athletes faster and better mm -hmm. without doing that. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of it also is I, I think sometimes people don't realize it's very easy actually very easy for me to take a group of tough athletes, young men who are in their early 20s who are already tough. Ma imagine a room full of American wrestlers or football players and train them in a couple years to be able to fight. Not, that's not too hard. Um, and what you're doing there is you're taking people who are already tough and you're just making them tougher um, or giving them skills, in which case they can, they can fight better. But to take people who who haven't come from that background, who might be middle-aged and, and spent most of their life behind a desk, or they're younger and have never been athletic. Mm -hmm. In other words, the people actually need martial arts. Mm -hmm. And to be able to make them so that they're tough, so that when somebody like that wrestler or somebody comes in off the street and trains with them, they wind up getting tapped out by those people. Mm -hmm. That's actually <laughs> harder to do. And the, uh, the irony is, when you create an environment that facilitates that, not only are you going to have a gym that's filled with women and children and families, which is great because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm a family man. And I want my, to train with my kids and my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have an a environment where I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing my wife or children. But beyond that, you also wind up creating a, uh, an atmosphere where the athletes can get better as well because... Mm -hmm increased brain trauma, sparring harder, mm -hmm. all that does is mean the athletes wind up getting injured more often and being able to train less and um, being more susceptible to being knocked unconscious. I mean, you don't make yourself tougher by getting hit in the head over and over again. Um, everything we know about brain damage and, and the science behind uh, uh, concussions, it's, it's just, there's a much smarter way to do it. And in terms of jujitsu, what we're doing is we're looking for solutions that allow somebody that's not as strong and not as large to beat somebody bigger and stronger and that makes them to do that by definition they have to be technically superior mm -hmm. and so you know if if you're rolling in jujitsu and you're escaping submissions because you're tough or you're fast or you're explosive that'll get people up to like blue belt purple belt level maybe competitive maybe but beyond that you hit a glass ceiling in this sport where those kind of gyms are never going to produce somebody that's going to be able to go to los angeles or and compete in the Mundials or the Pan Ams at the highest level at a brown or black belt level. There's a technical skill set that's just completely beyond them because they haven't gotten to the point where the training has become about efficiency. And so jujitsu by definition has to be done intelligently if you want to eventually get really good at it. You know, as John Franco would say, you have, you have to care more about winning than you do, I'm sorry, you have to care more about learning than you do winning in the gym. And, uh, you know, if it was a kind of sport where you could bench press more and then that would manifest itself in your performance in, on the mat against somebody that's a belt level higher than you, to be honest with you, it would probably have bored me a long time ago. Mm. It's not that way. Mm. And you can be 
a monster and if you're going up against a really good black belt and, and you don't have any grappling they're going to dominate you on the ground even if they're physically smaller than you especially in a grappling only match and that's what makes what we do cool right mm -hmm. and so i think sometimes those guys sounds like in the place you came from just haven't been exposed to that mm -hmm. aspect of it and hopefully eventually over time like we did mm -hmm. will evolve to a, a more mature tougher environment because in the end what what winds up happening here is we produce people that are going to be tougher than what they're producing in the end so but you always have to approach this intelligently right